Welcome to Hannah's Heart. So Hannah, she's just one of the women who did struggle with infertility in the Bible. No matter who we are, we can be inspired by the fact that Hannah took her pain to God and God heard her and was with her. So when she was praying at the temple, she had been weeping and not eating and her lips were moving, but her eyes were closed and the priest was like, why are you drunk at the temple? Because yeah. it can become an obsession when you want Wanting a child so deeply. And desiring that baby and to be a mama. Every holiday, every Mother's Day. This is not a show that's going to promise you a certain outcome. But this is a show that says, however God answers your cry, we know that he's enough. Hi, this is Kendra. And I'm Anne, and thank you for listening to Hannah's Heart today. That's right. Um, we are streaming this episode on the AFA streaming website. You can come yeah. see video of us, which I'm a little nervous about doing that. Now we have to yeah. start putting makeup <laughs> on in the mornings. <sighs> no more messy ones. Right, right. Um, but for those of you that are just joining us, this is a show that deals um, with topics of infertility, miscarriage, adoption, however God builds your family. We just want to go with you on that journey. We recognize because we both have walked through that, that this journey can be really difficult. And we want to encourage you to cling to Christ in the midst of it. That's right. That's right. So today um, we're actually going to talk about a subject that's still, uh, infertility is always heavy on my heart, but for some reason this topic really gets me. It's chemical pregnancy. And um, I feel like we've kind of thrown around the word for Mm -hmm. sure, or the phrase, Um, But I don't know if we've ever gone into full detail. And I feel like, in my opinion, that's a problem in itself. Yes. Because I feel like doctors do about the same thing. Or family or friends, when they hear that you've had a chemical pregnancy, uh, that's about how that pregnancy is treated as well. Just in my opinion. So before we can even, I think, go into this topic, we got to do some defining and get out our biology books a little bit, right? Yeah. (laughs) Study (laughs) what we're talking about here. So a chemical pregnancy, if you have not heard of that, um, it's really just a very, very early miscarriage. So it usually happens, I think it's considered, I think they call it a chemical pregnancy that happens before 13 weeks, but that's more of still just looking at it as a miscarriage. Chemical pregnancy, I think, if we're technically talking, is around five to six weeks of gestation. So after um, the, if we want, embryo, the baby has um, implanted in that uterus. Right. So a lot of times. The word chemical comes from, so when that embryo implants in the uterus, it begins producing a chemical. HCG. HCG, a hormone, I guess. Right. A better word. Yes. That can be detected on a pregnancy test. Right. So you can get a positive pregnancy test. If you were knowing to look for it, but, Mm -hmm. um, but then that embryo ceases to continue developing. Right. Right. So a lot of women, um, that you hear about having these, they get a positive pregnancy test and three days later they start bleeding. And so they, you know, are pretty much miscarrying at that point. There is sometimes that your body will bleed and you're not miscarrying, but for the most part, um, if you've gotten a positive pregnancy test and it happens that soon, a lot of times that is what is happening. Um, a lot of people, when you look up chemical pregnancy and they call it just a very early miscarriage, um, a lot of women, from what it says, don't even know that they have experienced these before. Right, because maybe they didn't know to take a pregnancy test at that right. point. So they didn't um, didn't know, and sometimes it, it just seems like a missed cycle missed period or like a late a later period right a day or two or Mm -hmm. early it it can I think go both ways Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's what I feel like makes it such a weird I hate to say weird but weird topic to talk about and I feel like even um causing some weird grief too right because it hasn't been long or maybe you even found out about the life after you lost the life yeah which can cause a, a totally different um, and people's ex- expectations of how much grief you should have when you have a chemical yes, pregnancy. Yes, and that about is that. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the things. And so I hope that this episode today, if you've experienced one of these, um, could possibly just let you like maybe take a like I'm be not, seen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
And so anyway, yeah, we can just get started because we'll, we have both experienced um, one of these. And so uh, that is one reason and we, we didn't have a guest for this show today. And so Kendra and I were just talking about topics that we could cover. And this just kind of mm-hmm. seemed to be one that was like, hmm, we haven't really talked about this in depth yet. So that's why we are here today. Honestly, it's kind of weird for me to talk about Kendra I feel Mm -hmm. heavy (laughs) you almost feel like I don't have a right to be upset Mm -hmm. about this because it doesn't fall into the category of a traditional miscarriage where you saw the heartbeat and you rejoiced and you had an announcement and I think one thing that's important to remember here is that um, nobody can tell you when and how you're allowed to grieve. Grief mm-hmm. is a natural response to loss. Mm-hmm. And this is a real life. So this is a real loss. In my mind, you know, I was struggling with like, you know, I didn't I didn't make an announcement. I didn't know for very long that I was pregnant. So I just, it's it surprised me mm-hmm. how I responded and how heavy it was. And I almost felt guilty for grieving as much as I did because I'm like, well, other moms have stillborn babies and like mm-hmm. how difficult that must be. Now that's not to compare. Like I can't imagine right. losing, you know, going all the way through term and then and then losing a child. Of course, that's a different kind of grief. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that this isn't real grief. Right, right. For sure. Especially us as Christians that view life at conception, then we are viewing this as a life that no longer is here with us on earth. Um, yeah, we, so we have experienced, uh, now six, Mm -hmm. um, chemical pregnancies. And so, and Mm -hmm. my sixth one was actually over Thanksgiving last year. So Mm -hmm. November, 2022. So it was so crazy. Will and I were not trying for a baby yet. I hate that term trying, but actively. uh, Yeah. (laughs) Uh, but we were, yeah, definitely expecting, you know, to wait longer to have another baby. And so, yeah, I think that the thought was not even in my head, like this was going to happen because it right. took us so long to have a baby. And so, and you have a, at the time a what, eight month, nine month year old baby, yeah, 10 months, uh, yeah. yeah, nine or 10 <laughs> months. Um, and so, yeah, whenever I started having symptoms, I think because I've had five now or now six but five at the time um I knew I was feeling weird and my body was doing weird things and I remember even telling Will like for some reason I'm exhausted I'm so tired but we have a two-year-old and yeah. a <laughs> Lots of things to old. Go. and it's a, the holiday <laughs> and it was the holidays yeah. family was coming into town so still working you know so yeah everybody's tired mm-hmm. and uh different you know still some different things going on and I just remember saying like I just feel so weird I just feel so weird and then all of a sudden one night I think at like two o'clock in the morning I was like I bet this is what's mm-hmm. happening and so um, the next day, yeah, I came, I came into work and then I left to get a pregnancy test and it was positive and it just like floored me. Like I just, I wasn't expecting that. Mm-hmm. And then yet yeah, to come, overcome with emotion because it's like I already knew it was happening at that point. That's why I feel like this is such a weird topic. Mm-hmm. It's such a weird thing for you to go through because yes. it's like I already know it's happening. Like there's yeah. no celebration. Yeah. And so then it's like as a mama, you this is the sixth time now that I'm experiencing that. The other times were all at the doctor to, to have them confirm that it was a pregnancy, either blood, well, I guess both by blood work and by a urine sample. Um, but the doctor, you know, saying like, yeah, this was, you know, I'm sorry to tell you, but you've already lost, you know, the baby. And so, yeah, that's, that's why I feel like it's such a weird thing to talk about. Cause there's no, we didn't go through that celebration. We didn't go through saying to our parents, we're pregnant. Mm-hmm. So then it's like, so now do I tell my mama? Mm-hmm. Now, do I tell my friends now? You know, but like, there's nothing to tell now. Right. <laughs> and so it's just a weird, it's a weird thing. So. You mentioned about doctors um, and the way that they talk about this and how, like, why do you think, because there's the term, you know, chemical pregnancy, mm-hmm. and then there's the term miscarriage, which a chemical pregnancy is a miscarriage. Why is it not always talked about that way, do you think? Mm. Well, they, yeah, that's a good question, because then it's like, so what happened? Yeah. <laughs> what well, happened here? Yeah. Um, I think 
because it is a, I think people expect you to grieve it differently, in my opinion, is a different way to approach it, or because it is that early. Like, I've heard the term, it was just uh-huh. a chemical pregnancy. It was pregnancy. just a chemical pregnancy. As if well, you weren't really pregnant. Right. So, uh, what was I? Yeah. Yeah. So, I had, when, when with IVF, so I had minimal sim- stimulation IVF, and they monitor the HCG levels afterwards to try to... Um, early determine because um they want to make I don't know they just want to you work so hard to right? maybe they're like we're gonna <laughs> watch you from the beginning yeah so I um had to go in for the first round of tests and um got my HCG levels and it clearly says on the form that it's like if it's greater than I think it's five then mm-hmm. like you're pregnant but then the um, fertility clinics say you know if it's like look for greater than 20 so I was like there's this like difference of numbers like what is it and my results came back in and they were low, but they were over five. It was like mm-hmm. 17 or something like that. I forget the exact number now. It should be burned into my brain because I Googled like furiously when this came in because you were like, am I or am I not pregnant? Right. And um, I remember talking to one of a nurse at one point and she was like, you're kind of pregnant. Like I think the term, like she wasn't <laughs> sure how to describe it to me. And I was like, what? What do I tell my? How? What? What do I do with that? What do you mean I'm kind of pregnant? Like that is not how this works. Right. So what she meant by that, I think, was that your levels are very low. We're gonna come bring you back two days later. Mm-hmm. They're supposed to be. I think it's like every 48 hours they're supposed to like double. Double. Yeah. So like it is like exponential growth that this hormone is supposed to have mm-hmm. in your body once you become pregnant. So what she meant or should have said was there is enough of this hormone in your body to know that pregnancy did take place. Yeah. But we are concerned because the level is low. We're going to see if it duplicates um, in in a few days. So when I went back a few days later, the level had dropped Mm -hmm. even lower. Mm -hmm. And so then it was described to me what had happened. But I don't know that miscarriage was ever the term that was used. It wasn't until I was really... (laughs) researching and like kind of looking like, it up that oh, I, this is what happened. And the heaviness of that word hit me, but it also was a really helpful word because that word meant what I felt in my heart. Yeah. You know, yeah. because with, that's a good way to put it. My, my husband and I, we had the opportunity of seeing our little embryos in a little, uh, they took a picture of the petri dish <laughs> and we had it on our phone and, and like, it's amazing <laughs> the minute we see them like, Obviously, you're hopeful that it's gonna that they're going to implant and continue For to grow, sure. and yeah. that you they will both become babies that you hold in your arms. It is impossible to stop your brain from like flying into the future. Like Eric said, he was like, I was already playing baseball with them in mm. the backyard and going to their graduation mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. like teaching them to drive cars and like all of this. So like they were very real human beings in right. our mind, and so miscarriage was the word that resonated with my heart. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Cause yeah, after you leave the doctor and you hear, I'm sorry, you know, this didn't happen. This didn't, it was just so weird for us to then like, okay, so then we're riding in the car together mm-hmm. and you just hear this news, but I never thought I was pregnant. Mm. So like that's, yeah, that's the, gotta be difficult. Yeah. It was just I at like, least had a moment where I had the joy and then the yeah. come down, but you had both. It, in it was just one uh, snap. Oh, I was. So I could get pregnant. Oh, but I, so why didn't I stay pregnant? You know? So yeah, it was just so many weird emotions. And I I honestly would love it if whoever is listening to this, if y'all have experienced that before this chemical pregnancy that we're talking about where, um, you either knew for just a second or didn't know at all. And then you're told, I would love for someone to reach out because Mm -hmm. I don't feel like we've heard from people that yeah. have experienced I think it's because they don't feel like they're allowed to. Yeah. Like, I think it's almost like, am I allowed to grieve? Like, I do grieve this, but society doesn't view it f- as the same. Right. You know, right. and again, that's not to say that another kind of hurt isn't deep or or even more, but, um, but I think the Lord just kind of spoke to my heart. He was like, it was a life. Mm-hmm. That's why you feel this grief so deeply is because it was a full human being right. from the moment of conception. That DNA is that new set of DNA is formed. Um, we've talked about this, but there's a flash that you can take a, yeah. they can take a picture at the moment of conception. Like this light burst happens, like this whole thing, like it is a life. So you, you mentioned the question of why, um, do chemical pregnancies happen? I did a little bit of research on that last night, <laughs> preparation for the show. But um, it seems like the most common reason is that it's an abnormality in um, the chromosomal yeah. level, so in the DNA structure. So 
it's, you know, that this baby has started forming and developing, um, but something in that code and that genetic makeup has yeah. um, an error, you know, a, a flaw that would make it not be able to s- sustain life permanently right. Right. and it stops growing. Um, so why do abnormalities in our DNA even exist? I think we have to look at the, the, the answer to that is going back to Genesis, yeah, yeah. going back to living in a fallen world. It Wasn't is because it? of the result of sin. Right. God designed that there would never be any abnormalities that would cause cancer or sickness or weakness. Yeah. You know, he, um, that was not his intention or his plan, but because of sin, we live in a broken world. And um, scripture talks about how the earth is literally groaning in anticipation of Jesus's return mm. because we live in a world that, um, it was wound up and it's unwinding and it's breaking down, you know, so like, uh, I'm not going to get into politics of all the save the planet people, but like to some extent, to some extent, like our planet is getting worse. And that's, that's scripture tells us like, you know, like that's to be expected. And the same thing happens with our bodies, our, you know, we were created for eternal life right? to be forever. We were created to experience Eden. Yeah. But then the fall happens and all of a sudden, like, y- y- your knees start creaking. And that happened for me when I turned 30. <laughs> You're like, Stuff does happen when you turn 30. <laughs> I remember laughing at my my brother when he turned, like, he was 30. And, like, we were doing something on the ground. And he went, oh, and he groaned when he bent down to pick something up. And I was like, you old man. And he and he told me, he was like, you'll understand when you turn 30. Like, he's three years older than me. So it wasn't that that much of a difference. And then I turned 30 and I was like, he was right. <laughs> My body does not bounce back the same way it does. But there Mark's is- <laughs> over there shaking his head. <laughs> Our wonderful producer. There's there's this idea, though, that we do have that we are guaranteed um, to live to a certain age, like 85. That that's the expectation. And yeah. anything else that happens is cut short. Mm-hmm. So, like, when a child dies of any age, we feel like, that's unfair mm-hmm. of God. Like, mm-hmm. why would you allow that? If you're sovereign and able to stop this, right. why did you allow that to happen? Um, but I think we have to go into that question of does does God guarantee every human being the mm-hmm. right to live to 95? Yeah. No, and he, and he doesn't. It's not. He doesn't owe us that. Right. Right. Man, but somehow he is still good. I think that is what we have to remember, too, experiencing experiencing miscarriage in general, child loss, any, any hardship is a result of human error Mm -hmm. of the fall. Right. And so we have to remember, yeah, what you were saying, like we were created for eternity. That's why we long for good things because that's why the Lord made us the way that he did. But then, yeah, because of sin entering the world, that's the reason why I abnormalities exist. Yeah, that's, yeah. Babies die. Cancer happens. But yet, there's that. Um, even though God knew that that was going to happen, um, He sent Jesus. There was a, mm-hmm. He built into the plan mm-hmm. a failsafe for humanity because yeah. He knew our weakness. He right. knew um, what would happen. And because of because of Christ, we get to have a certain measure of Eden right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think what the theological term for this is. But it means um, we have it, but also not yet. There's like a, a pre-fulfillment and a fulfillment of Eden. When you accept Christ as a believer and He, the Holy Spirit indwells you, there's a certain level of Eden that you experience, but yet we yeah. still live in this fallen world. Like you get the relationship part of yeah. is restored yeah. with God, but yet you still have this sin nature. You still have um, to struggle and you still have trials that you have to overcome. And it's not until... Um, either heaven when when you die and go to be with Jesus or Christ's return right. that this order is restored and we're returned. I know this seems like basic theology for some people, but it's helpful, I think, because the number one thing when you find out that you have had a chemical pregnancy or a miscarriage of any kind is like, why did this happen? Mm-hmm. And that leads to, is this my fault? Right. Did right. I sin? Is God punishing me? Yeah. I'm a mature, I, I like to think I'm a mature believer. I don't know. Maybe I'm not that mature, <laughs> but I've been a believer for a long time. Yeah. And immediately I I was thinking, was it something that I did in the last couple of weeks that right. God is judging me for that this is happening? Right. So yeah. Silly. No, it's hard to do that. I think that comes with, and you weren't even technically a mama then, but right. you 
You were. Yeah. And the same with ours whenever I first started experiencing these and how I grieved those babies. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, no one teaches you this is how you do this. This Mm -hmm. is what you will go through. And so I feel like that is where the lonely part Mm -hmm. of this can come in. Um, And a spouse might not understand it the same as you either because it's not their body experiencing those things. Right. That's what even Will, (laughs) love Will, everybody (laughs) loves Will. Um, But whenever I experienced this last one and his reaction to it and my reaction to it were completely different, Mm -hmm. you know. And so, and it was a busy time. It was literally the week of Thanksgiving that I got the positive pregnancy Mm -hmm. test and family was coming into town i think that day and so it was like yeah you put on a good face and you go i'm so sorry (laughs) i cannot imagine well it was just it was just weird because yeah then it's like we're all happy family's in town it's time for thanksgiving and uh then how do you say hey this is what's really going on you know and so Anyway, just so such weird things. And if you've gone through that as a listener, I'm sorry, you know, and I'm sorry if you weren't, if you didn't feel like you could stop what was going on and say that, because, yeah, I understand. You don't get the opportunity to have a funeral for a chemical pregnancy. Yeah, there's just no recognition. And so Mm -hmm. that is what I think is so strange about it. When we have the sonogram picture and then we miscarry or when we get to hear the heartbeat or Things like that where you at least show, okay, this loss just happened. Then you at least have something to acknowledge it. But when there's nothing, Mm -hmm. it just feels like nothing. So what are some hurtful things, Anne, that you have heard people say, or or maybe not to you, but in general about chemical pregnancies? Like Mm -hmm. what what should you not say? One... (laughs) uh, I have some things written down. It just wasn't meant to be. It just mm. it just wasn't meant to be. Like, what are you, when someone does say that, like, what are you, obviously, so what are we have saying a plan that? for this life? Yeah. Right. Like, what, when you say that, that that's not helpful. Go read Psalm 139 if you think it wasn't meant to be, because Psalm 139 says that every day ordained for me was written in your in book, your book yeah. before one of them came to be. That scripture was so comforting mm. to me during our miscarriage because I dealt with, well, why? Why even have a life if it's going right. to be this short? Right. And we're not like, all this seems to cause is pain. What yeah. good could possibly come out of this, Lord? Like, why would you allow this? And that scripture, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be means that like the Lord had a, an ordained number of days, not that the Lord caused me to have a miscarriage. Sure. There's a difference between allowing and causing. Mm-hmm. I think allowing is just the result of living in a fallen world. Mm-hmm. Um, causing seems to make God out to be this like manipulative um, creature. You know, I don't know. Like like it's it's hard to reconcile his goodness, but I think he allows bad things to happen um, for reasons we can't comprehend. Right. We'll never be able to understand this out of heaven. Yeah. Uh, another thing is you're lucky it was early. Mm. I remember someone saying that to me the first time. Well, just be glad it was early. And, but they didn't understand what I was wrestling with Mm -hmm. in my head and in my heart at that time was that fact that it was so early Mm -hmm. and like, but I, my mom doesn't even know this happened, you know, like Mm. things like that because I had nothing good to tell her, you know? And so, um, just, yeah, watch out what you're saying to people yeah. as they're and opening their heart to what you. What they're thinking is, you know, it is more difficult to have a miscarriage the further along you go. Yeah, yeah. But that doesn't acknowledge the current grief that a right. mom is feeling of right. this being a very real life. That's yeah. a good one. Um, at least you didn't have to, and then fill in the blank, at least you didn't have to do a DNC. At least you didn't have to take this medicine, you know, different things like that. Uh, at least you didn't have to announce and then re-announce, you know, what had happened. And so um, what, those are things that you don't have to then go through physically. But, yeah, there are so many hidden things, I feel like, that a chemical pregnancy causes you to go through because it is such a hidden thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you wouldn't say to somebody who had the death of a, a five-year-old child, wow, at least at least you didn't, you know, like get to get graduation, you know, yeah. like then it'd be really, yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. And then somebody said this to me not long ago, 
but you weren't even ready for another baby yet. Mm. And so it's like, I, I, right. Yeah. I, I don't know how to respond to that, you know? Yeah. And so I mm. will say the people that would say, at least you weren't ready, you, you weren't even ready for another baby. That person has not been through a miscarriage. Mm. And so if you have been through a miscarriage, you would know that you would not say that because you know that that mama doesn't feel like that, mm. you know. Well, I wasn't ready for another baby yet. Um, but, yeah, I hope the show, it's been a different show. Yeah. It was for me um, to talk about this. I hope it helps someone who went through this very silently. Yeah, that's, God, that's God what sees you, and we want to let you know we see you. Go yeah. read Psalm 139. Yeah, yeah. Go read Job when, when Job struggled with understanding God's whys behind everything. It's a difficult book to read. But this is going to help you realize that God is still good. Mm-hmm. He loves you, and he's going to be there for you. Right. You can always find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and the streaming platform. Thank you so much for listening.